Hey y'all, hey y'all, how's it going? Ciao. I don't know why I keep bothering y'all. Why I I I honestly I honestly can't help it. Like I pray you guys are having a great day. Um it's like when I'm reading the word of God, like it blesses me so much and and I just be reading God's word and it just do something for my spirit, for my soul. And and every time I read something, every time, every time, every time, I be in, encouraged to, you know, share what I just read, you know, to encourage somebody else. And I'm like, oh God, I'm all I'm I'm getting on here, you know, with the word. You know, I was just, you know, reading God's word and I'm reading the book of Ezekiel. I'm reading, um, this comes from Ezekiel 44. And, and I was reading this when God had took Ezekiel into a, a vision. And, um, he was showing about, you know, the, the, the rebellious house of Israel. And so when I get down to verse number nine, it says, thus says the Lord God, no foreigner uncircumcised in heart or uncircumcised uncircumcised in flesh shall enter my sanctuary including any foreigners who is among the children of Israel and so while I was reading reading this passage the heading of it it says those admitted to the temple so when I was reading this um, God brought a vision he brought a vision to me and in the vision, do you remember when our mothers, like when we get ready to go outside and, you know, mama would always say, you know, watch your brother, watch your sister. She would give us um, stipulations on what to do and what not to do. And then she'll tell us what time to come in. When you out there, make sure you watch your brother and your sister. Make sure you be in the house before nightfall. You know, they, they tell us stuff and they tell us stuff so that it would you know, be beneficial for us. So, um, and so in the vision, I, you know, I visualized that. That was a vision God had gave me. And then the other vision, it was another group of kids, but there was a kids that like, they, they did whatever they wanted to do, how they wanted to do, as long as they wanted to do, wasn't nobody bothering them. And then God showed me in the vision that though that was obedient to their parents that watched their brothers and sisters they did what their parents said when they came back in the house that they were safe but those who were still there you know after a certain time doing whatever they wanted to do that you know harm came to them could have been pregnant could have gotten shot could have been in jail could have been kidnapped you know and god was saying that those that who are obedient, that was obedient to their parents, that was okay. And those that who had no guidance um, and probably were disobedient to their parents, that while they was out there, that harm came to them. And then the Lord was saying, it's the same thing with us as his, as his people. God has his, his statues in place for us. He has his, his way of doing, you know, set in place for us for our good, but for his glory. And just like the children that did right to their parents, did right by their parents, God expects us to be the same way. Because even when you're grown, when you're married, you got your own business, you're doing your own thing, you still belong to God, which means you still have to answer to him. You still have to listen to him, and you still have to do what God says. And that scripture just blessed me because he was saying foreigners. To be a foreigner, you know, regardless if you're the person say, I love you, Jesus, Jesus Christ is the head of, of my life. Oh, almighty God, you know, I love God. You know, we can say all these things with our mouth. But if we don't do what God says, that we are considered as foreigners, regardless of how much you go to church, how much you pay tithe, or no matter how much you, you, you know, you say you love people. You know, if you don't love God above all things, nothing else matters. And if you don't, if we don't do what God says, if we don't, you know, look, towards him and say father god you know here's my life like you know if we if we just disobedient that we are considered foreigners we remember jesus has said that um that's going to be a time when people are going to be like jesus going to say they're going to say lord lord didn't i cast out devils didn't i do this 
Did I preach well? Did I walk well? Did I love it? I did all these things. And he would say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. And the reason why he would say that, like, you was doing some of the good stuff, but in secret and in your own doing that you defiled God. You defiled the temple of God. You didn't want to do what God said. You know, you, you did it for a little show, but but you didn't you didn't do it unto God. You didn't really give it all to God. And so he was showing Ezekiel in a vision. And in this vision, you know, a vision, you know, it, it, it probably won't happen right then. It was happening like what we are now in the future. Like many of people that's in the church, they're foreigners to God, you know, because we done, we have defiled and brought these abominations to God, which means that we have, you know, aborted what God has said for us to do. We um we we live in houses with husband with men and women that are not our husband and wife, but we play in house. We um and and we allow our children to disrespect us, you know. And you allow you know abortions, all kind of stuff. You just have to read the word of God, and you can just see you know what abomination are you causing before the Lord. But He says that He said it. You know, if you un uncircumcised in your hearts, he ain't just talking about the male, you know, the male private parts. He talked about in your heart, which means like if your flesh is overruling that with God, that he said we're not going to rest in his kingdom. And so what God said for Israel, he said the same thing for everybody else. Those that, you know, he followed God because his grace and mercy has been scattered and it has been extended to everyone. And so that like really, really blessed me. And I just want to just felt encouraged to tell you all about it. And so something else God has shown me in a vision. Um, he was saying alignment. Alignment means that you are, are you aligned? Like, are you, you know, in tune? Are you following this way? This is a, an alignment, you know, right here. And so the vision that he had gave me, he gave me the vision of a, of, of a car with the wheel and the tire. And, you know, somebody can be going down the road and they car pulling this way. They turn it this way, but it's pulling another way. That means that you need an alignment. So just like that we know that our, the tire rod, you know, thank you, Holy Ghost. The, thank you, Holy Spirit. You're in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, when we, when we have our tire that, I mean, our stern wheel, you know, it's a, it's, it's small on, on the car. So when you have your stern wheel, if that stern wheel, it does not have the alignment within the inside that goes with that tire, that car is going to always constantly pull. You're not going to get, get a good ride or a good guidance if you don't get the right alignment. So that's the same thing with us. God allow us to have our life. He allow us to have our own free will to do what we want to do, live how we want to live. But if, if we're not aligned up with the word of God, if we're not aligned in what he says, like in his faith, in his obedience, if we're not line, uh, aligned right with what God says, then we're going to be just like that, that vehicle that's trying to go one way, but it's pulling another way because it needs an alignment. So just like we know that if you try, it's hard trying to drive a car, a vehicle that needs an alignment. It's very hard. It's very hard because, you know, it's, it, 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 it calls too much um, attention. And that's the same thing with our life. If our life isn't lined up with what God says and how God says, that it's going to be turbulent. It's going to be very, very hard. And what I love about God, God give us grace and mercy, which you mean he give us a time to repent and ask for forgiveness and turn away and do the things that he want us to do. But we as people, we don't want to do that because the gospel, the word of God it's the least of our word. We don't want to deal with that. We, we don't want to deal with that because it causes us to be accountable for our actions, the things we say, and the things we, the things we do. So we don't want to deal with that. So we don't try to hear the word of God. We don't try to listen to the word of God. And we don't, we don't want to read it because it calls you to, you know, take inventory of your life and, you know, what you're doing and what you're doing wrong. And, but the thing is about God, what I love about him, about God, he, he has so much mercy for us. He has so much grace for us. I mean, that like, he loves us so much that he is saying, I'm going to give you another chance. Let's do this thing over. That he'll wipe away all of that. He, he, would, he would literally just wash it away like it never happened. And then he give us a clean slate to get back in him, to follow him, to worship him, to be about his business. God just wants our relationship God wants our 
everything. He wants that. And in order for us to get that, you got to spend time with God. You got to spend time with reading his word. Because I could, I tell you this, and, and I just say this like, I just thank God. When I don't know what to do, when my spirit is troubled, just, just when I just in need, I go to the word of God. And when I'm reading the word of God, it is so interesting. Like when you read in God's word, you know, it bring it literally, you know, when you're really concerned about God, when you really want to know God, it brings tears to your eyes. It makes your heart cry because you, you get to reading the word of God and you like, you know, all this time that I'm out here trying to make money. I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do that. You know, my mind is all focused on everything else. But God, I wasn't focused on your word. Like you was the one that controls all things. You're the one that allowed me to have a job. You don't want that allowed me to have a vehicle. You're the one who allowed me to have food on the table. You're the one who allows this. But yet I neglect you. And when you read the word of God, y'all, it, it just brings you so close. It's like a, it's a fullness all over your soul. <laughs> Y'all, God's word is, is, is so good because it make you, because you be talking to God, you know, you be, you be listening to him and you be, you be hearing him speak off the pages and we all know that God is real. We know that his word is real, but in order to really, really know him is to open up the Bible and shut everything off and just read. When I tell y'all, reading the word of God is so beautiful. When I tell y'all, spending time with God is so beautiful. It feels so good. It's like, it's a touch, it's a feeling that no man, no woman, your mother, your father, your best friend, you know, no amount of money, nothing can give you the feeling that you can give can touch the feeling that you feel when you are reading the word of God. Because when you read the word of God, you are standing with Jesus. You are talking to Jesus. You are thanking him. You know, nothing compares to the Bible. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. You could just, just think about something that just made you feel so good and so joyful in your heart. I guarantee if you read the Bible, you open up and you start reading, nothing compares to that feeling because it's God who's speaking. It is amazing. So I just wanted to just share that with you. Just wanted to share it with you. You know, I'm going to go back to read my Bible because I'm telling you just, it take away all pain. It take away everything. The word of God, you know. So y'all have a blessed day. I just... Wanted to share that. Read Ezekiel 44, starting at verse 6 through 10. It will really, really bless you. Yeah, have a great day.